I'm going to start moving, rotating and scaling the geometry in the XYZ directions. And I'll start by getting this first wheel into the right position. So I'll use Pick Object and you can see now how the grouping and naming has made it really easy to select the wheel. So now I can use the Transform palette where I have the Move tool. And this uses the three mouse buttons to move in the three XYZ directions, shown here in the RGB triad. So to move this wheel out to the side, I use the middle mouse button to drag it in the Y direction. And I can tumble the view if I want to to get a better view, and just keep dragging till I get it roughly in the right position. Now I need a second wheel for the rear, so with my front wheel still selected, I can do an Edit Copy, or just use the hotkey Control c And then I'll do a paste. And to start with, it's difficult to see what's happened, but a second wheel has been placed at the same location as the first, and it's left highlighted. So the Move tool is still active, and as the wheel is already selected, when I start to move it in the X direction, it's better to come out into a spare bit of space and just click and drag with that first mouse button. And I'll just get it into position by eye. But I need to be careful in this side view. If I go over to the view cube here and click on left, you'll see that it now says orthographic. And this means we've gone into a true 2D view. And the mouse buttons work differently. In 3D, they are X, Y and Z, but in the 2D view, they are free, horizontal and vertical. So if I use the first mouse button that was X in 3D, here it's now free movement. So I'll just do an Edit Undo or Control Z here to get it back again. So in this view, it'll be the middle mouse button that I want to use to move it horizontally into a good position. And we'll cover these different mouse constraints in much more detail in the next section. But for now, I recommend that you just work with XYZ in the perspective view. So I'll just do a pick object now on the front wheel to make sure both are selected. And now I can use scale to modify the size. So I'll click and drag again in a spare bit of screen. And you can see that I'm using the same diagonal as I do for zooming to say bigger or smaller. And one of the benefits of having grouped the wheels in the previous tutorial is that all the components have the same pivot position, and so scale around the same point. So I'll do a pick nothing and then pick object again to just select the front wheel. And now I'll look at rotating it in X, Y and Z. So the middle mouse button rotates it in Y, in the direction it would revolve, centred on that green pivot point. And if I wanted to turn the wheels, that would be the Z direction. So I can use the right mouse button to do that. So I've got two of the four wheels now. And I've got a few options to get the other two. I could use the Object Lister and the Symmetry on Layers to display a mirror image. But because I've rotated the front wheel, it doesn't give me the right result. So in this case, I'll take the symmetry off and create a separate mirrored copy instead. And to do that, I need to think of where the mirror plane would be and be able to describe it in X, Y and Z. So I want these two wheels to be copied over to the other side. So if I visualise the plane, then that will be an X, Z mirror plane. So first I need to pick the two wheels and then go to Edit, Duplicate, Mirror. And I need to go into this small square to open the option window. And now I can choose the right plane, which will be the XZ. And that now creates two new independent wheels. And I can do a pick nothing and a pick object again to select the front wheel and then rotate it again to get it roughly in line with the other front wheel. Now we've been working interactively here. We'll cover working accurately with dimensions in a later tutorial. So to finish off this section, let's do a pick nothing 
and go and shade the car. And to make it a bit more interesting, down at the bottom of the shading panel, I can turn on reflections. And I've got a choice of scenes I can reflect to make it look a bit more realistic. So assemble the car and experiment with the colours and the reflections. And you can use the quick tips pages as a reminder if you need it. But the best thing to do is just spend time playing until the mouse keys for zooming and moving become instinctive. And this means that when we start to create our own geometry in the next section, you'll feel in control of the working environment.